it's not really a great idea just to say, okay, we'll just rip out the drywall and do it ourselves. I mean, when you do that, you're exposing more of those spores into the air. And so you want to make sure you're doing it correctly. Hey everybody, welcome back to Fab Fertile TV. I'm Sarah Clark. And I am Brandy Bosco. Awesome. So excited today. We're going to be digging into environmental toxins. This is something about that we, we talk a lot with the couples that we that we we work with. And really environmental toxins, they're all around us. But um, today we're going to just kind of do a like a brief overview of some of them. So um, first we have air. So the air that the air that we breathe, um, personal care, um, cleaning chemicals, um, pollution, so environmental pollution. Um, yeah, uh, pesticides and herbicides, and a lot of the, you know, we're in, the, we're in the middle of a huge food experiment. So, with the glyphosate that's been uh, sprayed in our foods, and is it has has a link to infertility as well as other whole host of other um, different health conditions. And um, yeah, so let's kind of talk a little briefly about about some of these environmental toxins and why it's important for fertility. Sure. So, I mean, air is a big one. Um, and unfortunately, we can't minimize our, or completely eliminate the exposure to toxins in our air. It's just kind of the world that we live in. But I mean, think of some of the things like smog. So if you live in a big city, there's smog from industry. There's, um, you know, stuff in the air from cars driving around um, when brakes, you know, break dust from cars. So if they're breaking at a stoplight, that's going into the air. That's kind of a chemical exposure. Some of the other things can be like in an office building that you're in. Let's say there was a leaky pipe somewhere and there's mold in the air. That's considered an environmental toxin. If somebody's painting, the, the off-gassing of the fumes of the paint, um, paving, there's so many different ways that you can be exposed to environmental toxins in the air. So some of the ways that you can mitigate that, um, especially in your home, because that's probably the easiest ones, is to make sure that you have a good filter. If you're running a furnace like we do kind of in the northern part of the U.S. and then in Canada, make sure you're cleaning that furnace filter often so that um, the air that is going through the vents is, is nice and clean and not full of pollutants. Um, household plants, those are really, really helpful. Um, those can clean the air in your home and if you are going to choose new products for your home like furniture and carpets try to get ones that are the best quality possible that have low VOCs um, maybe organic materials because a lot of those will have fire retardants in it and stuff like that and so they'll be off gassing chemicals for a really long time um, so it's really really important to to focus on that and the other big one is the mold so if you know that you've had water damage in your home or in the building that you work in that may be difficult in the building that you work in but definitely at home if you've had water damage make sure you check for mold there's a lot of resources online where you can do that um, it's not really a great idea just to say okay we'll just rip out the drywall and do it ourselves I mean when you do that you're exposing more of those spores into the air and so you want to make sure you're doing it correctly um, and so that's uh, another option and if you want some more resources or some help with that definitely reach out to us and we can definitely point you in the right direction yeah and even a lot of times in our house i think there's a isn't there a stat that you're actually breathing more more um fumes that are, are harmful by just keeping by just the air we're breathing in in our house due to all these things that are, are off gassing Mm -hmm. And really to maybe crack the window open once in a while and actually sleep with, you know, sleep with the window open. Well, then you, may, you might think you're getting the stuff from the outside, but actually to let the, 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 the fresh air come in can be quite helpful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, and anybody who lives through the winter and you have your windows closed all winter and then the spring comes and you open up those windows and everything smells so fresh in, in the house, you feel better because of that fresh air. So that's definitely true. So those suggestions like using air purifiers and plants and making sure you're changing your furnace filter, even getting your ducts clean. So if that hasn't, you haven't done that, um, that could be really important because things can settle in there and you're just basically recirculating that and rebreathing that. So those are all really important things to, to think about. Yeah, I have a house plant in my, in my bedroom that's, that's, that's how it helps to purify the, the air. So it's, yeah, definitely, definitely helpful. So uh, another one we, we look at is our, our personal care. So this is ones where actually, you know, not taking everything and Bring in the garbage is as as things start to to clear out, then gen, you know gradually, gradually replacing all all of your your personal care. Because a lot of these things, if you go if you go to the Skin Deep database and you can get your your current personal care 
you, you can um, get it rated and see exactly what it what it is as far as a, a harmful rating. Um, but it really it does it does impact your 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 health and your fertility. So we always suggest to people to switch out their their personal care. Yeah, and unfortunately in North America, um, the laws have not changed since the 1930s. So there are chemicals in our personal care products that have been known to be toxic, to be carcinogenic, that have been banned by countries like the European Union for years. Um, but in the U.S., the laws have not changed since the 1930s, and there are things in our chemical, our chemicals in our cosmetics that we're being exposed to that are definitely known endocrine disruptors, meaning they affect our hormones. They affect the hormones in our children. And I mean, these chemicals are in kids' products, you know, baby shampoos, face washes, all of those things. So it is really important to look at your personal care products and, you know, not to throw everything out and start all over because that's really expensive. But, you know, once you're kind of down to that last little bit of your shampoo, try to see if you can find a different one. Um, or, you know, if you're looking for a new foundation, you're getting to the end of that one, look for a cleaner product and gradually make the switch over. It all makes a really big difference. Yeah, I think a stat is that the average woman leaves the house with over 127 chemicals on, you know, on her body. So it is, it is to, to, to gradually make those changes. And the same again for your, for your cleaning, your cleaning products. So switching out your laundry, your dish detergent, your, you know, your, your sprays for your counter. Again, again, this, this, this takes time. Yeah, the cleaning products are another big one. I mean, um, there's a lot of chemicals in cleaning products that really aren't necessary. And the nice thing is, is that there's a lot of great companies out there like Seventh Generation and Mrs. Myers and um, so many different ones that have alternative products now that you can use. You don't need to use the chemical laden ones anymore. And again, it's a slow process, like slowly switch out your laundry detergent and maybe your dish soap and your dishwasher detergent. And, you know, for cleaning windows, I mean, you could get super crunchy and just, you know, make your own with essential oils and vinegar and baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. There's a lot of really great recipes online to be able to do that. Um, so that's another thing to really think about. And again, don't throw everything out, like you said, Sarah, but as you run low on something, look for a better alternative. And it's, as I've made this switch, I've noticed from, from the, the, the conventional cleaning chemicals to the natural ones, I used to come in and be like, why do I I'd get a, like a headache when, when I'd smell the cleaning stuff or it just would make me cough. And now I'm like, oh, it, it actually, when the house is clean, I don't have any of those kind of those symptoms. So it's interesting because I didn't really even correlate it for years that, that that was the problem. Yeah, for sure. And there are a lot of resources online. I mean, there are some products that you might try that don't work. I mean, that's definitely true, but um, you'll find what works for you. And maybe you do have to use a little bit more elbow grease sometimes on tougher things, but that's okay. I mean, in the end, you're not breathing in those terrible, terrible fumes. You know, the, one of the worst ones I can think of is an oven cleaner. Yep. I mean, you spray that. I mean, that's just horrible. There's other ways that you can do it. So just some, another thing to think about, um, and don't overwhelm yourself. Small changes have a big impact. Absolutely. And then plastics, obviously, if you're, you, you, you want to make sure your water is filtered and you want to make sure you put your water in a, a stainless steel or, or a glass uh, water bottle, not a plastic water bottle, which so many of us, you know, doing the plastic water bottles for years and years, plus you're, you know, you're, you're polluting the planet, but um, just to invest in something like that and staying, staying away from the plastics, because obviously plastics putting that, well, if you have to use a microwave, you can, but, but definitely don't put plastic in a microwave because that mm -hmm. really impacts the food. So all the, all the, all the BPAs and the, and the phthalates and things like that in plastic can, are, are known endocrine disruptors. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, there's a lot of plastics out there that say BPA free, but be aware of those as well, because they're using a different chemical that's still carcinogenic and still an endocrine disruptor. So stick with glass, stick with um, stainless steel. The nice thing is, is that these are becoming more and more affordable now, like you can easily go and switch out your Tupperware to glass containers and it doesn't cost a fortune. So that's um, a good thing. Another big one to be aware of when it comes to BPAs and plastic is there's actually BPAs in receipts. So um, mm -hmm. that's something that a lot of people don't know about. So if at all possible, you know, if you don't need the receipt, then just don't take the receipt or just ask them to put it in the bag and you can toss it out later. Or a lot of companies now give you the option of being able to just email your receipt and just, just choose that option instead. Um, that's 
that's a really, really big one that um, a lot of people don't know about is there's a lot of BPA on those receipts and then you're walking around and then you touch your face and being exposed. So that's another one to think of as well. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the pesticides and herbicides, um, so basically you can go to the environmental working group. So ewg.org and look at the, the dirty dozen and the clean 15. We, we always recommend doing hundred percent organic, but in the beginning you may, you may want to at least look at the dirty dozen and those are the most highly sprayed foods out, uh, out there. Also, you always want to choose organic and the clean 15 are the ones that, that aren't as sprayed. Uh, again, we recommend going, you know, non, non GMO and organic, but, um, yeah, a lot of the times we don't even know what we don't even think, especially even at, at our, our, our farmer's market, we can go in there and there's, a, there's actually, there's, uh, by our local farmer's market, there's a, uh, there's an organic, um, grocery store close, close by, and they have a sign saying local does not mean organic. And sometimes we forget that. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, the other thing to know is, and the common misconception is people think, well, organic is healthier, and it's not because the organic produce has more nutrients in it. That's not the case, because studies have shown that. It's more so that the organic produce doesn't have all of the chemicals and the pesticides used in the farming. That's what makes the difference, um, and so that's why we say that. Now, if for some reason, you know, you are buying something or you can't afford organic, because I know I definitely can't afford all organic, but I do my best to stick to that dirty dozen and if it's a dirty dozen item I will choose organic otherwise I'll go non-organic if it's less expensive but I just make sure make sure you're washing your fruits and vegetables there's some good washes on the market just make sure you're cleaning them and, and getting rid of that residue um, and it's better to eat vegetables than not eat them um, but just something to be aware of and and we understand that budget can be an issue for some people so just do the best you can yeah, and then with water, um, you want to make sure that so water has got all sorts of, of toxins in it from chlorine to, from chlorine to fluoride. Um, what else is in it? Um, plus a whole, I think there's like 300 different chemicals in there that, that, are, that are in our water. But really, um, to, to get a filter on your water if you can. I like the Berkey, B-E-R-K-E-Y. Um, it, it filters out some of, some of the, those top toxins. Mm -hmm. But um, if, like, there's, I guess, a Brita is a, a decent option, but it doesn't doesn't um, take out all the different toxins that um, the Berkey could or some other different options. Yeah, and there's a lot of them out on the market. Um, you know, the Berkey is a, is a good one. They do have ones you can go on Amazon filters for your shower and filters for your bathtub. It's essentially a charcoal filter that's filtering some of those chemicals out of the water. Um, and if you have to start somewhere, start with a Brita. But like you said, Sarah, it doesn't filter out things like chlorine and fluoride. Um, so you'll want to look for something more like maybe a reverse osmosis system or something like that if you can afford it down the the road mm -hmm. but definitely just look at the water and don't be drinking just pure tap water um, filter it somehow and then as time goes on and budget allows then you can look at other options that filter all of the water and in fact the, the one thing that I want to say about the water and the showers and the chlorine is you can actually absorb more chlorine in your shower not because you're drinking it but because you're using hot water and this it's a vapor and you can absorb it into your pores so I mean if you could only afford to do a Brita but you could afford to get a, um, a shower filter which is maybe 20 or 30 dollars definitely think about doing that because that's going to be helpful because your, your skin absorbs a lot of chemicals. Yeah, which is super important for the thyroid too. So with, with, um, with chlorine and absorbing those, those sort of chemicals, which yes. negatively impacts the thyroid. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So great. This is uh, environmental toxins. So really to be aware of what is going on and gradually make the shift and you know do the best you can. Mm -hmm.